Hey POE folks, this is Mr. Good, and I'm making a video on Compound Machines Notes. Uh, so when two or more simple machines are used together, it's called a compound machine. And most things you use are compound machines, because rarely do you just have one thing, like incline plane, or just a screw, or you know, just a uh, a wedge. So, like scissors. You've used scissors before. I don't know if you thought about it, but scissors are a compound machine because there's clearly a fulcrum in the middle, right? And, you know, because if you drew scissors, let's do a basic pair here. Do, 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 do. So we have our scissors here. Um... I guess I drew them closed, but the fulcrum's right there in the middle, and then when you open them and close them, you got a lever going on. You know, it's kind of like tweezers. You got your lever, so if it was open, you'd have one side going this way and one side going that way. But what you might not have thought about is that you're using wedges. I mean, look at the blade on a pair of scissors, and you have a wedge. So not only do you have a lever going on, but you have a wedge, so you could, you know, do the mechanical advantage and stuff like that. So to calculate actual mechanical advantage of a compound machine, it's pretty easy. You just use the normal formula. AMA equals uh, force effort, oops, sorry, force resistance, AMA free over force effort. Almost made that rookie mistake. Okay, so basically if you have a bunch of machines um, in a row, like you could have, think of a Rube Goldberg kind of thing. If you just knew your force that went in and your force at the other end, then you could uh, calculate your actual mechanical advantage. So it's not crazy, but ideal mechanical advantage of a compound machine requires a bit more work. It's also the thing you can do easier because how often do you actually have force meters for you know, something at the beginning and a force meter at the end. It's not as likely, but since ideal mechanical advantage deals with distances, um, think about it. If you have more than one machine, you have your IMA of the first machine, and you have to multiply that by the IMA of the second machine and if there's a third machine you have to do the IMA of the third machine and you're multiplying every single time so dot 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 however many machines you have you have to find each one of their mechanical advantages and multiply them together so you find the total IMA by multiplying pieces together. Okay, so let's do a simple one. I put a pretty easy one to start out with. Uh, when you look at this, you should have learned gear trains earlier in the week, and or maybe last week, and I have a 20 tooth gear, and I have 5 tooth gear, and I have a 36 tooth gear. So this is a gear train. And up here we kind of have a lever. Um, imagine like pulling down on this, it'll make this guy rotate this way. It'll make, you know, if I pull down here, it'll make this one spin up. It'll make this one spin down. It'll make this one spin back up. All right, so you got some turning going on there. So basically, when you look at that, you, sh you should see two different systems. Right here, you have one system. And this is actually, whether it looks like it or not, Looks like you have a handle you're pulling. This is actually a wheel and axle. Um, and then you have a simple gear turn. So I'll call this part one and this part two. You basically have two machines together. Why is this a wheel and axle? Well, imagine spinning this around. I'll draw it a little without the teeth. Right. 
imagine taking this and spinning it around, right? Kind of see that. And then what's giving resistance are the teeth here that are coming in contact with this one. So you got your resistance here. And there's your distance resistance. And your distance effort has to do with you know this right here. So you have your distance effort and your distance resistance. You do have to be careful on this one because the 8 inches is only a radius. So you don't want to compare the 8 inches to the 4 inches. You want to compare 8 inches to 2 inches of radius. Or you could do 16 to 4, whichever you want. So wheel and axle, I'm going to do the IMA here. If it's a wheel and axle, um, IMA is I'm a deer, DE over DR. Distance effort, I'm going to go with 8 inches, because that's where you're pushing. Distance resistance will be 2 inches, because that's the radius of the thing that's resisting. 2 inches. So this first guy, inches cancels with inches, first guy has an IMA of 4. Your second machine is a gear train, a simple gear train. And gear trains have a bunch of formulas, but basically gear ratio, which is kind of like the gear train's IMA. You can think of gear ratio as mechanical advantage. It's teeth out over teeth in. It's N out over N in. N out over nin. So teeth out over teeth in. So if this is my one that starts it, there's my input gear and there's my output gear. It's going to be 36 teeth over uh, 20 teeth. That middle gear, it doesn't matter. The five teeth has nothing to do because every tooth that goes here goes there. It's called an idler gear. Um, all it does is space things out and help you keep these turned in the same direction. So long story short, you're going to get 36 over 20. And that is 1.8. So the gear ratio, so mechanical advantage here is 4. Mechanical advantage, also known as gear ratio, is 1.8. So your total IMA of the whole machine, if I cranked this compared to the mechanical advantage I have over here, how difficult it is to turn, I have made a mechanical advantage of 4 times 1.8, which is a mechanical advantage of 7.2. Um... Now it says, if I took 15 uh, pounds of force to overcome 100 pounds of resistance, calculate the efficiency. Whenever I see efficiency, I want to do AMA over IMA times 100. Well, I just found out IMA, right? So that means the words they gave me probably have something to do with AMA. So off to the side here, I'm going to say AMA free, FR over FE. What's my force resistance? 100 pounds. What's my force effort? 15 pounds. Pounds cancels with pounds. Then you get 100 divided by 15. Now that's 6.6666 repeating. Keep extra decimal places. And in the end, I want to make sure I put AMA. So here's efficiency. AMA is 6.6 .6 repeating over IMA, which is 7.2 on the dot, times 100. And you'll have your efficiency. Um, I'm going to take my old answer. Remember, use exact answers. Don't round it and round it again. That's bad news. And that comes out to be 92.6% efficient. That's pretty efficient. All right, so that's an easy one. Turn it to the back. We're going to get a little crazy. Okay, so here's the back. Oh my gosh. Um, I said give this one a try and make sure you organize your work very well. So you're going to pull on this. Here's, here's the breakdown of what happens. I'm going to pull down on this string. It's going to pull on this movable pulley. It's going to pull on this string to spin the big wheel, which will spin the axle, which will wrap some of the string on it and pull down on that lever which will pull up on this lever, which will pull up on this pulley, which will pull up on this string, which will pull up on that lever, which will pull down on that lever, which will pull up on this string and move the box. Holy cow.
Rube Goldberg, right? But it breaks down pretty easily. Once again, organize is what you need to do. So if I ever give you one of these, you have to organize your stuff. Okay, let me pause and number these. If you look at it, I got seven shapes. I got a fixed pulley, a movable pulley, a wheel and axle, a lever, a movable pulley, a lever, and an inclined plane. That's just a wall it's tied to. Okay, so I want to go through every one of them. If I want the total compound machine IMA, I'm going to multiply all the individual IMAs. So here we go. Let's do machine one. See how I'm organizing it? So if you want to know where I did my calculations for this, I'm writing down fixed pulley. Now this one goes up and over a single pulley. I'm pulling the opposite direction. So this would be IMA equals hashtag strands, which is one. And you don't count the one you're holding on to. Number two, movable pulley. Now this one you're pulling up in the same direction as you go. So you count both strands. There's two of them. IMA equals hashtag strands equals two. So let's move to the next shape. It's a wheel and axle. Now you got to think of where the effort is and where the resistance is. Okay, Wheel and axle. Remember IMA is I'm a deer, DE over DR, which would be the effort, think about where your effort is, you're pulling on the outer part. So your diameter of this is your effort, 5 centimeters, over your diameter of the axle, which is 1 centimeter. That's your resistance. Just cancel, you get an IMA of 5. Oops, didn't even see that. You get an IMA of 5. Object 4 is up here. It's a lever. It's a first class lever. Where's my effort at first? Well, since this reeled up some of the string, your effort is right here. So when I go to do number four, which is a first class lever, I'm going to go IMA is still DE over DR. My effort distance is this, four centimeters. My resistance distance is this, two centimeters. Cancel that, you get an IMA of 2. Okay, moving on. Object 5. See how I'm labeling everything? This is a pulley, movable. Since both strings are being pulled up, you're going to pull up on this one, you're going to pull up on this one, then you do count them both. So IMA equals hashtag strands. Since you're both pulling up, or it's a movable pulley, it's you do count both strands. Okay, now we're down to six. We're almost there. Number six, we have another first class lever. IMA equals DE over DR. Now this time your effort's on this side, because here's where the original pull comes from. And this is resisting it. This string over here is resisting it. So it's pulling up here, it's pulling down there. So your DE is one centimeter. Your DR is three centimeters. So you get one third as your IMA for that. And you're on your last shape, an inclined plane. It is still DE over DR. And on this one, remember, DE is the diagonal, DR is the block moving up. So I'm going to have 10 centimeters over 5 centimeters, which is 2. Your total IMA is to take each one of these and multiply it together. So that's 1 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 1 third times 2 which comes to a grand total of 26.6 repeating. All right, awesome. Hopefully that makes sense. Look at this beautiful work. You can tell exactly what I did. That's what I want your work to look like. Units, canceling, formulas, all that goodness. All right, talk to you later, folks.